But I am actually going to talk about the state of cybersecurity, but I like to look at things from a different perspective. I'm a person that really likes to open up my mind and open up everybody that I'm talking to. So I'm talking to you guys just like we're just guys having a conversation, right? Uh, this is kind of, oh, that door just opened up automatically. So I was asking a couple of people as some more people were coming in, what does cybersecurity really mean? Does anybody know? Because I'm talking about the state of cybersecurity, but I'm not for sure what I know I'm talking about, right? Cybersecurity, it's a lot of different things. But I want to look at this from a different perspective. So bear with me a minute. I want you to think, and I want you to be totally honest with yourself. I don't want anybody to raise their hands, by the way, because I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to think about it the question that I'm asking. But don't raise your hands because I don't want anybody to incriminate themselves. Ever thought about robbing a bank? Seriously, think about it. I know there's, she's looking at me like, are you crazy? Have you, and, and we're humans, right? We think about dark things sometimes. So I want you to just be honest with yourself. Ever thought about robbing a bank? Don't raise your hands. I have. I thought, you know, there's been some times where I didn't have any money, and I'm thinking maybe I could. But we think about things, but we never act on them, right? Think about things, but never act on them. So think about it. How would you do it? You hear stories in the news all the time. People walk in, hand somebody a note, act like they have a gun under their coat or something. There's something there, right? Hand, hand the cashier or the, the, the teller a note. Hand over all your money. I have a gun. She digs in the till, does whatever she needs to do. You know, he runs out, he's gone, right? He risked it all, risked it all. A couple thousand dollars, maybe. Right? Not a good way to go. I'm thinking a little bit bigger. If I'm robbing a bank, I'm going big. I'm thinking, you know, maybe $100,000. So how do you do that? How do you pull that off? $100,000. How do you rob a bank for $100,000? Got to time it right. Got to make sure that, you know, you've got a deposit coming in from a big commercial bank or some company that's got payroll coming in, or you got a bunch of Brinks trucks rolling up, right? And they're getting ready to drop off a lot of cash, so you get $100,000. And you can't just go in there and rob one teller. You got to probably bring a real gun. And you got to go through, you got to jump, and you got to go through all the teller's tills and try to get as much as you can. And that takes a little bit more time, but think about it. You're trying to get money, right? And I, I'm going somewhere with this. Don't, I'm, I know you're worried here. I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble. We're going to get to the cybersecurity part in just a minute. I'm trying to get you to open up your minds. We're robbing a bank. We're trying to make some money. What, what, what do criminals do? And aren't hackers criminals, right? So they're always trying to do things that are bad, right? So that's, that's where I'm going with this. They're all criminals, and we're talking about criminals, cybersecurity criminals. But we're robbing banks, right? $100,000, real gun, got to jump over, got to get all the teller's money, empty all of the tills and everything, and I'll run out. Hopefully I got $100,000. I'm risking it all for $100,000. Takes a little bit more time, so I got to get in, got to get out pretty quick. But what about bigger than that? How about a million dollars? What do you got to do when you rob a bank for a million dollars? <laughs> Somebody's been watching some movies. Million dollars. We're robbing a bank for a million dollars. Got to have a little bit more you know, planning, right? You got to have a better team. It's going to take a team for a million dollars, right? Um, I'm sorry. I was about ready to say that. You here? So seriously, it's 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 like an Ocean's Eleven thing, right? You got to have a team. You got to be prepared. You got to go in. You got to know what's going on inside the bank. And by the way, a million dollars. There's probably not of a lot of 
just regular, you know, banks that are sitting around with a million dollars. But you got to hit it at the right time and you got to have a team to do it. Now, let's think a little bit bigger than that. How about a billion dollars? How are you going to rob a bank for a billion dollars? Think about it. Can it can it happen? You're, you're, you're close. You got a point. Billion dollars. Anybody want to try it? Bingo. Yeah, you got to go through SWIFT, and I'll get to that in a minute, but you got to go through a national bank, right? A Federal Reserve, when you think about it. If I'm going to go for a billion dollars, how am I going to get that, and how am I going to get it off of just a regular bank? You're not, it's not going to happen. So we got to start thinking Federal Reserve. So... And it's going to be Ocean's Eleven. I've got to have a team of people to do it, right? So think about it. Now, this is where we get into cybersecurity. It has actually happened. Anybody know? Anybody want to take a guess at when and what bank it happened to? And, well, I mean, if they're taking my money, they're not getting rich. <laughs> I'm thinking about robbing the bank, right? So I don't have a whole lot invested in this bank. So we're talking about Ocean's Eleven. We're talking about a bank that we're going to go rob for a billion dollars, and it has happened. It was the biggest bank heist in history. So let's get started. How did, first of all, how did we do it? And, and by the way, I'm going to stop real quick because I'm going to give you a commercial. <laughs> Somebody's got to pay for this message, right? My name is Terrence Davis. I'm the solutions architect or senior sales engineer for Armis Security. I am also the lead for the uh, asset vulnerability management solution that we have on the platform of uh, vulnerability management. So if there's anybody here that has a problem knowing what assets they have in their environment, or if there's anybody here that has a problem prioritizing their vulnerabilities, come see me. We'll talk about it. I can, I can probably help you guys out. Enough of the commercial. By the way, I just wanted you guys to know that they always put me here right before lunch because when I do my talks, it's about 30, 35 minutes, maybe 40 with a little, you know, interaction and stuff like that. So I get you in line first. That's why they put me here before lunch. So biggest bank heist in history. What am I talking about? So how it started was there was a group of uh, guys and what they had available, you know, they start thinking about, well, what are we going to do? What bank should we, number one, what bank should we go after? We got to figure out where we might be able to find a bank that's got a billion dollars that we can take. So they start looking around for these banks. They end up on the bank of Bangladesh and why? First of all, Bangladesh, thriving economy. They're starting to come up, but kind of still a third world country in a way. So maybe they don't have the security that normal banks will have. And Bangladesh Bank, by the way, is the National Bank of Bangladesh. So it is like their reserve bank, right? So they're going to have a lot of money in there. And the great thing is, is the group of people that decided to do this had some really good hackers that had to figure out how are we going to do it. So it all starts with a phishing campaign. See, we're getting into cybersecurity. Told you, we're getting into cybersecurity. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to get you in trouble. We're not all going out and doing some Ocean's Eleven stuff, hanging from wires. You know, we're, we're good. Got some great hackers. Send out some phishing emails. And somebody at the Bank of Bangladesh, three people, open up this phishing email. And it's just a regular email that's uh, got a zip file or it's got a CV in it and it's uh, like somebody looking for a job. One person got infected. Got lucky. <laughs> Sent out, you know, three opened it. One person got infected. Great. Now I'm on one computer in the Bank of Bangladesh. Where do I go from here? Got some pretty good hackers on my team, right? Ocean's Eleven. Got some pretty good hackers. 
we create three pieces of malware. Three pieces of malware. Number one, I've got to create the back door so I can get in here anytime I want to. So I got one guy creating the back door into the Bangladesh bank. The second thing we do is we create another piece of malware for the encryption channel to hide everything that I'm doing, right? If I'm coming in and I'm going out and I'm taking stuff, I got to hide all that information. I don't want anybody to see what I'm doing. I don't want anybody to know. So I got a encryption channel. And the third piece of malware that I'm going to create or that the hackers create is a piece of malware that starts to scan the network because they're looking for all of the activity that happens in the bank, but they're looking for something very specific. And you said it just a minute ago. Anybody understand or has ever heard of the term SWIFT? Well, yeah, he, one guy, there's another couple. So people have heard of SWIFT. So SWIFT is the international banking program that is almost like the wire transfer program, right? Millions and billions of dollars transfer between banks all the time using SWIFT. But SWIFT, dude, you can't hack that stuff. You want to know, you want to find something unhackable? It's SWIFT. But there's always something that you can go and hack that's even maybe related to SWIFT, right? And there's always going to be human error somewhere. How do, how do most hacks start? Human error. Opened up a phishing email, and now I'm in your system, right? So they've got this malware, and it's going out, and it's looking for all these systems, and it's trying to find out what's going on. They find the SWIFT terminal within the Bank of Bangladesh. And guess what? They also find out that the Bank of Bangladesh doesn't have the money. All the money is sitting in the New York Reserve bank. And there's a billion dollars sitting there. So we're talking about a big heist. Billion dollars. Bank heist. Ocean's 11. I love it. All using hackers and stuff. We find out what's happening with SWIFT. We start to understand how they manipulate it, right? So you, you basically are sitting there. This, this is a year. Think about this. The planning that it takes this is a year before the actual hack. A year, a full year. So what do I have to do in order to prepare? Well, there's a couple things, right? I gotta know everything that happens. I need to make my transactions look just like what they do. So I'm monitoring what their activity is for years, or year, and I'm, I'm trying to emulate the people that are making these transactions at the Bank of Bangladesh. I also need to open up some bank accounts because I got to put the money somewhere, right? Can't just take it and go, hey, I'm going to go put it in, you know, my bank. That's me, Terrence Davis's bank account, billion dollar transfer. Somebody's going to, you know, freak out. My wife would. She, she'd try to figure out how to spend it real quick. She probably could, too. Um, so, you know, we're going to open up some bank accounts. Open up five bank accounts on Jupiter Road in Philippines at the RCBC Bank. There's five right there. Open one up in Sri Lanka. Open up, I mean, it's international, right? We're opening up bank accounts. That's the only ones that we actually know about, and I'll tell you how we know about or found out about it in just a, a few minutes, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. But... We open up all these bank accounts, specifically the ones that I want to talk to or specifically think about are the ones on Jupiter Road in in the uh, Philippines. And the reason it's in the Philippines is there, there's a really, really super good reason for that. So I got my bank accounts ready, got my hackers in there. I start to look at SWIFT, and I start to understand how SWIFT works. I've got to figure out, though, how am I going to get the money from New York from the Bank of Bangladesh over to the bank accounts. And the timing's gotta be perfect, right? If you're going to do a bank heist, when do you do it? Perfect answer. So you already know the story. 
Yeah, you're, going, you're looking for a bank holiday. You're looking for a bank, you know, it's going to be Monday. It's, you know, some kind of, nobody's going to be at the bank. You get three days. But these guys are even smarter than that. This team of crackpot hackers are smarter. So when I talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly, the good is these guys are brilliant. And I hate to say that because when you find out who these people are, you're going to go, Phew. I can't believe you're saying they're brilliant, but they are. They not only start thinking about looking for a bank holiday, but they're also looking for a bank holiday when they're going to do this heist for when the money's going to the bank. And also, how are we going to get the money out of New York through the Bank of Bangladesh and to where it needs to go? And all that's going to happen over the weekend. And then guess what? If I do it over the weekend, there's nobody at Federal 